Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GMAT out of this book here, the GMAT Review, the official guide. The problem that if you do not have this book, buy it. You can, you can, you can purchase it at MBA.com. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 166, number 109. number 109. Let's take a look at it. It simply says all of the following have the same value except so there are five answer choices four of those five answer choices are uh, have the equal value our job is to find the odd man out. Let's start with A. A says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 over 5. Let's see what it boils down to. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, so it is actually 15 over 5 is 3. Let's look at second statement. Right now, of course, we have no way of knowing what's going on. Let's look at second statement. If second statement also works out with 3, then we know that both A and B are correct, and the answer has to be C, one of the, one of the three remaining three answer choices, C, D, or E. If the second statement is different, then of course we do not know what's going on here until we get to the third statement. Because if the second statement is different, then uh, either one of them could be one of the same values as the other three. Second statement says B is one-third times one plus one plus one plus how many ones? Three, four, five. So what is that equal to? Well, it's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's 5. It's just 5 thirds. 5 thirds. Since 5 thirds is different from 3, I really don't know which one to keep and which one to throw out until I try one more. Let's try one more. Oh, C is very simple. C is simply 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third. Plus one third plus one third. There are five of them. One, two, three, four, five. So it's just five thirds. There you go. Since these two numbers are the same, since these two values are the same, the odd man house is A. A is the answer. That's it. If you want to continue, uh, if you have the time and if you want to continue, it's up to you, but you don't have to. The answer has to be A because these two are same, which means the other two also have to be same as these two because there is only one odd man out. We found the odd man out is A. But just to satisfy your curiosity, I'm going to continue it. If if I were if I were taking a real exam, I would not. I would not waste my time. I would just pick one, uh, pick A, and move on. But that also depends on how much confidence you have in your ability. How confident you are that you're not going to muck it up. If you're not sure about your arithmetic ability, if you if you think that you're going to you might have screwed something up in your arithmetic, then you might want to try the other two. But this A is the answer. Let's look at D quickly. D says two third times one half, one half plus one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. Five of them. Five of them. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to erase this part here so that it's not annoying to us. So there are five of them, which means this thing simply boils down to. 2 thirds that I have here, 2 thirds, times 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half, that's 3 half, 4 half, 5 halves. Times 5 half is what it boils down to. It boils down to 2 thirds times 5 half. As you can see, if I simplify it, the 2 cancels out and it ends up with, we end up with, 5 third as you can see same as these three or the same as those two let's look at the very last one just to satisfy your curiosity that it is in fact going to come out to be 5 third E E says ah E is interesting it says 1 third plus 2 sixth plus 3 ninth plus 4 12 plus 5 15. Well, let's take a look at it. 
Can I reduce this to two six into something? Of course I can. The two I can divide by both uh, top and bottom by two, and I end up with but one third. So two six is same as one third. Can I reduce the three nine? Of course, three goes into three one time, and three goes into nine goes into three. So this is one third. If I divide the top and bottom by four, this is one third. If I divide top and bottom by five, this is one third. As you can see, these are all one thirds. 2, 6, 3, 9, 4, 12, 5, 15, they are all one third incognito in disguise. And therefore we have five one thirds. One, two, three, four, five. There are five, five thirds. There you go, the same is. As I've said before, when I do private tutoring, so the answer is A, it's the only admin out. When I do private tutoring, face-to-face -face private tutoring, and not, and not just me, any teacher, any teacher in the world for anything at all, when the teacher is dealing with the student face-to-face -face in person, it's much easier to gauge the ability of the student. And I can tell not only your mathematical ability, but your, but your language ability, your vocabulary, and everything. So sometimes I use words which may be very simple to some people, but it may not be some, uh, so very simple to some other people. So if I think that the word may give you some trouble, I write it down. The word was incognito. Look it up and learn it. It just means in disguise. So here we had four, we have a one third here, and then there are, we had four more one thirds, which were incognito. The two six, the three nine, the four twelve, and the five fifteen. But as you can see, every single answer choice boils down to five thirds, except one, which was this one, the very first one, A. That's it. Listen, if you wish to buy my DVDs in which I solve all the problems in this book, there are about 400 of them, 250 problem solving questions, 150 data sufficiency questions. If you wish to purchase those DVDs, uh, send me an email, go to my website at www.prep, that's P R E P, for F O R, gmat.com. Or if you wish to hire my services for personal private tutoring, face to face private tutoring, one to one, I'm located in the state of Connecticut. Send me an email and we'll talk. Alright? Thank you.